worlds. So one of them is going to be the same for all three of you. So I might as well do all three of you at once. And then we'll, the second I one is office system. I have to be sworn in. Even. Oh, you have to be sworn in too. Oh, right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> keep doing she that. It's like once. I don't exist. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was reelected. No, see, it's, like, it's like the voters vote. I wasn't sure camper. I was going to get to speak last evening. Because everybody is just really, anyway. I remember. You did. You did. I was very pleased, but I also was surprised because it hasn't been happening. <laughs> <That's our standing. laughs> and, um, and when we're done with this part, um, this is not required. It's just a cool thing. Uh, we have this ancient oath book that lives in the vault, and this one has uh, signatures from folks going back to uh, uh, the 60s, the late 60s. So folks often like to add their names to the, to the record, even though, again, this is a meaningless oath. It uses some um, uh, archaic language. You'll see, you'll see men crossed out and persons written in, um, and it also was full of "So help me God." And if you don't want to, you don't want God to help you. You can always cross that out. Um, but anyway, it's just a fun little thing, and it's something I can pass around. Um, you'll see the top part is for you all, and then the bottom. You can look at the other ones. And see what else, and then something else. But anyways, okay. I know we have a short agenda, but I don't want to filibuster here. So well, I'll just have all four of you stand up for the first one, and you can all do this one, and then we'll do the other. I swore I wasn't going to stand up next to this guy. <laughs> 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 Life is uneven, yes. <laughs> okay, so raise your right hand. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont, and that you will not directly or indirectly do any act or thing injurious to the Constitution or government thereof, so help you God or under the pains and penalties of perjury. I, I do. do. Okay, now this next part. The last one is office specific, so I'll start with you all and get from there. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully execute the office of city councilor for the city of Montpelier and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of your judgment and ability According to law, so help you God, or under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. I'll officially support you. Right. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully execute the office of mayor for the city of Montpelier and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of your judgment and ability according to law, so help you God, or under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay. So I just noticed that the two mayor ands, one will be right. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> oh, right in line. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I guess we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, so the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yay! This is gonna be great. <laughs> okay, so um, first thing is to review and approve the agenda, and we have a couple of changes. Uh, one is, I guess we're not doing the uh, audit uh, report today. Um, so we're, they're sick, so we're gonna wait till they um, are, healthy. are healthy and can come back and present to us in person. We're um, also yes. not gonna have uh, the bills on there because uh, they need to be printed out with the correct counselor's names. So you'll just have extra stuff to sign next time. Okay. Um, and I, are there any other changes? Is there a street closure? Uh, well, it's shown as a... I think it's, a, I think it's on there. Add the add next is, item is an add-on. Yep. Oh, yeah, what's on the add-on add agenda? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, Donna? Since some things have been removed, I would ask that we consider talking about a retreat date so we could possibly get that on our calendars. Uh, I think we were going to cover right? that. Uh, under the orientation and or the goal process. Okay. Does that, does that yeah, that's sound good. okay? That's good. Okay, great. So the, uh, the objection will consider the um, agenda approved. All right, general business and appearances. Time for anyone to address the council on some matter that is not on our agenda. And I'm assuming that no one's jumping up. Okay. Uh, so consideration of the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve or to, to move that? And then we'll Sorry, and then we can remove items. Do we want to pull H off the consent agenda so that we can just clarify what we're yes. exactly approving? Yeah. I think 
if I'm not mistaken, we should probably approve, have a motion to approve the consent agenda, and then we'll pull it off. Does that make sense? Well, no, you, or you can you do you do it? approve everything else and just no. Just well, so. don't you have to have a motion to, to then remove something? No. Oh, okay. Any single council can remove a consent agenda. Okay. At any time. Before. The well, before you vote before. on. It. Well, right. I guess I'm thinking like you have to have a motion first, but no. Thanks. So, I will okay. move to approve the consent agenda, uh, except for. Or reserving item H for further discussion. Any second on that? I will second that. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Can we do H right now? Yeah, let's do H right now. So, my understanding was that we had a recommendation from the police chief to approve this with a change. Um, and the change was to have Ms. the condition of, they had asked for the whole State Street, and we just think between Davis and Taylor, uh, Aiken and Davis makes sense, and then people can get into the parking. And so our recommendation is to approve it with that condition. It's a little smaller space, but that way they still have State Street to spill out into. And we have, we'll have barricades up. Hib City staff communicated with them about that, and if that's acceptable to them. Yeah, they have, the application just came in. Yeah. Would you like to? Oh, yes, Donna. Well, and that was one of my concerns is that we have <coughs> nothing that I know of in place when someone needs a street closure. They're planning an event, but they haven't included us in that planning. And yes, we want to work with them, but it seems at some point there also ought to be some a penalty, some community service, something they do to help pay us back because. It's a major inconvenience, and it's unsafe for them to do it. It's not been authorized or approved through the police department. Well, and what would have happened, we did talk about that, is, you know, the, the police has the authority to take certain actions. We were aware of the event and knew that the size was coming up. And, you know, if we'd had to, we would have closed the street anyway. I mean, the police would have got barricades and closed the street. They're going to have enough personnel on. So in this case, we're really just formalizing the action that would have happened anyway. Um, so, I, you know, we, you never know how big a crowd's going to be. They, they had mm -hmm. duly reserved the, the State House lawn. I, I spoke with the organizers this week, and they had, you know, they've got their porter potties. They're doing, they were actually talking about ADA issues, and they were like, oh, but we realize we're going to spill, you know, now we think it's getting so big, we're going to need State Street. So we just filed, you know, a street closure permit. You know, I mean, yeah, good. I mean, at least we all know and we're doing it properly. But it's, I guess we'd still rather they do it in advance than, you know, we're still more prepared by doing it this way than not at all. Right. Just that as long as you get what you ultimately want, you just people keep doing it. That's all. And it concerns me. This is not the first time. Mm -hmm. and so. did, did the organizers know that this is the recommendation from the city staff? <coughs> yes. Okay. And did they have any? No, they were fine. They just, okay. they were, their concern was that the crowd was going to spill out into the street. And if it does, I mean. Then it, the street would be closed. <laughs> and if it does, we would have closed the street because we would have, right. it would have been the safe thing to sure. do. Um, so. so I would move then that we approve the application as amended so it would close from Aiken to Davis. All set. All right, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, electing officers. So the, you, the council, have three officers as per the charter, a president, a vice president, and a parliamentarian. The president presides over the meeting if the mayor is absent and or at any other function that, that the mayor might otherwise do. The vice president fills that role if both the mayor and president are not available and the parliamentarian uh, is the official parliamentarian for the council, although the city clerk also does a fine job with it. <laughs> and it has happened. We have used both the, the vice president, president and the vice president. <laughs> yes, we have. Sometimes in the same meeting. <laughs> so I, uh, last time we, we did this, I think we sort of nominated people yes. to, to do this. So are there any suggestions? Yeah, I will go ahead. I will nominate Ashley to be president. Ashley, are you? Up for that? I accept. <laughs> <laughs> Any other nominations? Seconds? Uh, well, uh, do we need to make this a motion? Yes. Well, you Probably. do. You do if there's yes. Yeah. Okay. But okay. 
So I move. Should we slate it if it's sure? Okay, so I would move to appoint Ashley to uh, Councillor Hill to <laughs> Council President. Any other nominations or a second? I'll second. Donna, did you have it? No, no, I was good. <coughs> okay, I saved my second before because you said not to. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, okay, so uh, all right. Any further discussion on that? Hey, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, okay, and uh, all right. So, vice president, do you have any nominations for vice president? I would nominate Donna, Councillor Bate, for vice president. Or do you want to stay? As okay, it's far enough. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Didn't expect it. <laughs> so we had a vice president. I really did. All right. Any other nominations? No. I think Councilmember Olson was the vice president last year. I, th I think. I remember. I think that is oh, true. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no other nominations. Okay. So, uh, I, is that a motion? It is a motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. All right, parliamentarian. Any nominations? I will do it if nobody wants to. <laughs> I would also give um, I was gonna say Connor this. and Glenn the opportunity. I, if you would I, like I nominate to Councillor Kruger <laughs> <laughs> for the role of parliamentarian. <laughs> And, 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 and no yeah, other. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and no other nominations. Yeah. Guys, my. Okay. Well, um, any other discussion? Uh, okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. All right. Well, congratulations, all. Great. So we move on. Done. That. Okay. Ethics policy. So this is. This is something that we sign every year. Do Correct. you want to say any more about that? Yeah. Um, obviously, you're welcome to make any amendments to it if you choose, but the ethics policy makes clear uh, issues of recusal, conflict of interest, anything like that. <coughs> and we have the council approve this at the first meeting or soon thereafter every year just so that there's a record that this group of six or seven uh, has seen this mm -hmm. and approved it and it's in the record and they're aware of it. So issue any questions about the ethics policy concerns or anything any, any discussion no okay great um, and I believe <coughs> that that's so Jamie has gone through and retooled mm -hmm. it to put all the gender neutral language in. thank you uh, great so I guess we do need a motion on this to approve this as our ethics policy so moved second any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And the rules of procedure. So likewise, um, the council sets up rules that uh, are meant to lay out how things are done and how, how meetings are conducted. And, um, I think these were approved prior to our, our um, retreat last year. Um, and so, again, any changes? I know the mayor caught one. Yep, I have one I'd like to make. Um, but so I guess I'll, I'll start, I mean, um, under number seven, and it says any items discussed in the, in the agenda under the heading of general appearances uh, should be... Under general appearances. Oh, that's under general appearances. Hmm. It wasn't. That is not what I thought. Um, so... If it were under general, uh, like the, the agenda, um, thinking that we would limit the, the time to 10 minutes for a subject seemed uh, pretty intense. But having said that, I just as a, we, we don't need to include it in here, but um, just so you know, I would like to um, just have some guidelines for ourselves as to how much time we allocate to any item. And which is not to say that like we couldn't take more than, uh, you know, a certain amount of time. I was thinking like, if we just set a limit for ourselves of like 20 minutes, let's say per item, and if something needs to go longer, that's fine. But uh, let's just um, check in with ourselves about like, hey, it's been it's been 20 minutes. Uh, do we want to keep talking? And and actually, um, in addition to that, one of the things that I would like to do, and again, it does not necessarily need to be in here, 
Um, but you know, for people who come to um, speak before the, the council, uh, I think it's reasonable to have those uh, comments be limited in time as well. Um, just as a general statement, I mean, we want to hear from the public, we want to hear everything that people have to say, but uh, if it's going to take more than, let's say, two minutes, uh, then <clears throat> my expectation was that people would submit their, those comments in writing. Uh, and uh, absolutely welcome that. And just for equity's sake, I mean, I, and I'm happy to keep time um, for that, but I want to do that basically all the time so that when it is really crucial and we have a big crowd, um, that we are being equitable to people who uh, have been at previous meetings. That maybe we're not so, um, you know, uh, there weren't so many people wanting to comment. Um, d how does that sit with you all? Any thoughts or comments about that? Yeah, Donna. <coughs> well, it's written, they have up to 10 minutes, I believe, mm -hmm. because I remember one year I tried to change it. And it's, it's okay to have that range if you want to leave it in the writing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to let people know at the beginning of every meeting that that's the standard. And I'm with you. Don't wait to the last people. Make everybody consistently have the two minutes. It's really important for fairness. Well, I wonder if we want to, I mean, I'm happy to say it uh, at the beginning of uh, a meeting. I mean, if we limit it to 10 minutes for general business and appearances, that's, that works for me, that's fine. Um, but for any further comments, you know, two minutes seems, seems reasonable. Um, one possibility is we just say it every time. Another possibility is we actually build it into this document. Um, what's, your, what's your thought on that? Either one, I think even within the agenda, if you're going to have like public comment and say, no more than five minutes mm -hmm. or, and testimony, two minutes. I think the more we can let the public know that, mm -hmm. I think the better off we'll be and they'll be informed. Do you think that's a change we could make to the template of our agenda? I mean, if we, if we approve or agree, um, that would be great. That'd be really helpful. Uh, Rosie, then Ashley. So the way that I read this was that the total discussion, if the item was uh, just under general business and appearances, would be limited to 10 minutes. But we could further limit individual comments to two minutes within that. You know, Presumably, if somebody brings a, an issue up that the rest of us want to discuss, I thought that that was what the 10 minute limit was. That, that makes sense to me, that the topic in general would be 10 minutes, but we could still hold that two minutes uh, requirement potentially to any individual. That's how I read that. Okay, but that sounds good. Thank you for that clarification. Yep. I'm wondering if it might make sense to get like a clock or something that everyone can see so that way like we don't have to interrupt folks or just just so everyone's on the same page about the two minute mark. I know the Supreme Court in some states have, has one and it's quite helpful to know where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if there's some particularly significant point you want to convey. Could, yes, Donna volunteer to do and do that under my vice president role in my desk <laughs> as I'm sitting here that would be great <laughs> I'll look for a battery clock yeah something. just something yeah. so people well, can see two minutes counting down yeah. or up whichever I'd prefer I prefer down but <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, hopefully I mean I don't think we need a motion about this but just hopefully city staff can find us uh, some program or dedicate a tablet to it or something like that okay great all right any Further thoughts, questions, concerns, amendments to, to this document? All right, hearing nothing. Um, is there a motion? I would move that we adopt the rules of procedure um, as, uh, as written. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Central Vermont Solid Waste District. So we need to make an appointment to uh, to this body. We, and if I'm not mistaken, we have one applicant for one seat. Is that right? All right, so I'm. <laughs> Is Ellen here? Move then that we appoint Alan Cheney to the Solid Waste District. I second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Gosh, we are cruising. That's <laughs> <laughs> how it's going to be. Ready. Right. New sheriff in town. <coughs> What's that? New sheriff in town. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs>
Okay, so uh, we, we're not doing the audit. But the audit reports are on your desk. Yes. So you have two weeks to memorize okay. them. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. Verbatim. <laughs> yep. Okay, so the, the District 2 seat. So I am obviously not uh, the District 2 counselor anymore. Uh, so, yes. Do we need an official resignation from you, or is it just does it happen now that you've been... What do you think, John? I think you do since you're okay. in conflict well, right now. So. Well, fair, that's <laughs> fair enough. That's two votes. Then I'm uh, I'm just going <laughs> to let you all. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess I'll just take this moment to say I'm re uh, officially resigning from my district two council seat. <laughs> um, I suppose I should have done that prior to <laughs> <laughs> getting sworn in as mayor. Didn't but didn't exist prior. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So. Um, the process from here for uh, uh, appointing someone to that seat. Um, I mean, I can lay out what I, how I envision this process going. Um, <coughs> or, uh, Bill, do you want to explain it? Or well, so there is no legal process, as I noted in the uh, in the uh, memo. The, the charter just says the council shall appoint and, and gives no other guidance as to how that should be done. Um, I can tell you that the last two times. We've had vacancies. The council asked um, people to get 25 signatures, the same as anyone who's running for election that wish to be. Um, we've not had a situation that I can find in certainly in recent time when it was in conjunction with an election that had just been held. Um, they've both, they've all been um, someone who left mid-year, and in one case, someone who passed away suddenly. And so. I think I explained to you guys that they just, there had been a former member, it was right about budget time, and the person who just got off said, oh, I'll do it, and they, they just appointed them with no process at all, and the person didn't run again in March, so it was truly an interim fill. So it's really up to you how you choose to do it. You can, you know, really whatever, whatever you see fit, but. Uh, when we open up a, uh, position on any other board uh, or you know, group, what, how many, is, is it usual to uh, allow two weeks for somebody to get their name in? Like how long is the usual time frame for that? It's at least two weeks, but you know. Oh, really? Well, it's, uh, it's not like this has been unexpected. Right, and I don't want the seat to sit vacant for that long given Right. So, uh, I mean, my, my inclination, I can tell you what I'm inclined to do, um, and uh, you know, we can certainly talk about that if people have other thoughts, uh, but I mean, my inclination is that we would uh, set a deadline um, at least a couple weeks out for people to get their names in and their, their resumes, a letter of interest, um, to express that they, they would like to be, uh, you know, considered for this appointment. and. Uh, and we'll, we'll take those names and give everybody a, a fair shake and um, and then make an appointment at the, the next council meeting. Um, what are what are your thoughts? Yes, go I, ahead. I think it is fair to ha have whoever applies submit the 25 signatures that any candidate would when they run for this office. That makes sense. I, th I think having a letter or resume and the signatures or, you know, or, or some combination, as long as the signatures are required and then just I, I'd offer just a, a fair <coughs> amendment that if either of the two candidates who just ran, that they not have to get signatures. Sure. Again. Yes. Three, if they choose. One of them has already expressed interest. And mm -hmm. I'm not, yep. not signaling any preferences, but just I think they sure. did campaign and do their bit. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, Donna. But if you're asking them to get signatures, I don't think it's fair to think it all has to be done in two weeks. So I would tend to go to the first meeting in April with a decision. We could have a special meeting in between if we needed to talk about it, but I think they need more than two weeks. What are, I'm, what are you suggesting sort of specifically? I'm not, not super clear. That we give them, say, three weeks, and then when do we, when, what's the exact length of time? Well, I would so say the first meeting in April. Three so weeks we out. 11, would, 11, right? It's a ways away. Well, three weeks out from today, one, two, three would put us at April fourth. So we could possibly have a special meeting. Well, so but if we if they're in by the fourth, 
then, I mean, the deadline for the, right. the 11th meeting would be the next day. So we could still potentially have the appointment happen on the 11th. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, if we, But if we give them till the 4th. Uh, yes, Rosie. The other thing is that we would presumably, if we had multiple applicants meet in executive session, so it might make sense to do it as a special meeting. Um, so when, when you say special meeting, I mean, are you, are you thinking of a different time or? Right, not as part of our regular, not our regular Wednesday night meeting, but mm. prior to that, so that whoever we appointed to join us for that Wednesday night meeting. Oh, for the 11th? Yeah. I'm not opposed if, to that. If, if we'd also have to um, just find a time when we could all meet. That, that could be tricky. We have done, I mean, when I was appointed originally to that position, it was during a regular council meeting, so it's... It, uh, I took the seat at the end of the meeting at the end of the meeting. Um, but uh, but if we want to find a, a time before that, that's fine with me. Other thoughts? Is there a mechanism for some sort of public input? I, I notice when there are other council vacancies in other cities, uh, maybe a questionnaire is submitted uh, to ask questions. That would, uh, it would also give the opportunity to circulate those questionnaires to city employees, voters, other stakeholders, and have a public input process for that. Just something we consider. Um, I mean, are, are you thinking about like can people come and comment on uh, recommending someone? So, we, with their letter of intent, with the signatures, um, maybe they would be asked to fill out a questionnaire uh, with, with specifically asking their vision for the city here. Um, I, I'd want to open it up to as broad a group of stakeholders as possible, and they might not be they might not be able to attend a forum or something. This could be something to circulate to other stakeholders. The Something department like heads, the collective bargaining agents. It's yes, I'm not really in favor of doing that. It's our responsibility to appoint. So um, I, I wouldn't be in favor of, of doing that. Although I would encourage folks in their letter of interest to mm -hmm. lay out their vision for the city. That, you, could that put that as a, you could say this is what we're looking for. You know, we, we're seeking applications for this. Please provide X. The other, to answer the question about public process is this is a public this is a public process, and at least in the past, when people have been appointed, they've come before the council, whether it's a special meeting or regular meeting, and made their pitch and answered questions, and supporters have come and also spoken to urge the council you know, to, to express opinion, and people are welcome to send letters of support to you folks or emails or contact you, and you know, it's, it's sort of uh, the electoral college. So it's So do we need to, um, we don't need to vote on this process. It would be good to be, have a clear statement of what you okay. intend to do, I think, just because, uh, you know, I mean, it's, again, it's all entirely up to you, but I do tend to think that the sooner we have a full <coughs> council, the better we're going to be. Okay. Um, I mean, if we're going to have a special meeting outside of uh, the, the appointment, um, on, or I'm sorry, special meeting for the appointment, um, uh, we would probably need to just figure out schedules for that, but um, just as a straw poll, are people in favor of doing that as a separate uh, part of, uh, as a, a special separate meeting, or do you want to build that into the meeting on the 11th? Or do you care? I would like to do it as a separate meeting and have the person, so just give them an opportunity to prepare for the meeting on the 11th. I agree. So we could have applications <coughs> due on Friday the 30th, is two and a half weeks from now. It's a full week. Can and I tear this calendar? I'm sorry. This calendar. Oh, sure. Oh, we well. can take it. We got we'll the months, and I keep looking. <coughs> is that? It doesn't go into April anymore. I bet it can. Oh, I went to June. Oh, there's April. Now there's no March. <laughs> well, March is almost over anyway. <laughs> See, we've, in the past, we've always had it when the big one was repeated. So I have to tape it back. <laughs> we'll have to get a new calendar. <laughs> so I was saying that if we, if you decided tonight, we could have applications due Friday the thirtieth, mm -hmm. and then could hold a special meeting the week of the second to sixth, somewhere that week, and then the person would be take their seat on the eleventh and would get all the packet materials in advance and everything else by on that. Friday the sixth when it went in. I think that makes sense. And that's so it's a little over two weeks for somebody to get signatures. So, so 
So wait, when are you suggesting that we do a special meeting? It would have to be the week of April 2nd to 6th. So two, three, four, five, six. But having Six the is Friday. <laughs> six being Friday. <laughs> it's even bigger bullshit. Now I can yeah. see it. Wow. We are instant service. Oh my gosh, week. look at that. It's recording on this talk. You can actually see that one. Oh, yes. yes. It's great. Right, so you're suggesting that we have applications be due on Friday the 30th. And then have a special meeting that first week of April. And that, it, gives uh, and that gives us the weekend to send them out to you so you all have time to look yep. at them. Um, Rosie. It should probably be an evening meeting, assuming that we're expecting people to come and, and present to us mm -hmm. and the public to us. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Donna, how does that sit with you in terms yep. of um, timing? Okay. Great. It's a little more time. What's that? It's a little more than two weeks. Yeah. Uh, public comment, yeah, go ahead, come on up and state your name and your address. Yeah, Jim Libby, 56 Liberty Street, uh, District 2, so <laughs> this person's going to be my representative. So it's a little unclear to me, if you could be really clear about what's going to happen at the two meetings, and it would be unusual, I think, to have a person make a presentation on the 6th and have you vote on the 11th. No, the, oh. as I understood it, they were going to have the presentation be the week of the fourth or fifth. They'll decide who the person. They'll make the oh, decision. Make a decision at the sixth. That or fourth or whatever, whatever day that right. meeting whatever is. Day the meeting and is. then that would allow the person time to be prepared for the meeting of the eleventh and come in and okay. be I've full fledged and gotten Does program. that that answers your question? Yes. It does. Great. Okay. So how do we package this all in a motion? Well, first let's pick a date on the week of oh, okay. <laughs> okay. date yeah, and time. Okay. 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 Do Wednesday the fourth. I, I can do Wednesday the fourth. Fourth is good. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> like heat calendars to look at. <laughs> I'm good for the fourth. I too am good for the fourth. May the fourth be. Yes, that's right. Yeah, except it's April. Well, <laughs> daily and a dollar short. <laughs> uh, I assume we're talking some comparable time, like 6:30. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A special meeting April 4, 6 30, for the purpose of discussing the district two and making the appointment. Should we get like seven o'clock just to give folks a, because we won't have our normal beginning business to give folks a sure business. seven o'clock? Seven is way better seven. for me. Okay, actually, eat dinner. Yeah, Jamie, you'll send out a calendar invite. Okay, she's on it. Okay, I have all the bits that you all have talked about. I might have the bare bones for a if you read it, then someone could okay. just say that. <laughs> so what I have is a motion that would that maybe someone would want to make to set a deadline of Friday, March 30th, for candidates uh, for well, I don't have in there is for uh, the open District Two Council seat to collect 25 signatures unless they were a District Two Council candidate on the 2018 City Meeting ballot, and submit letters of interest to be considered uh, for a council position to be chosen at a special meeting on Wednesday the 4th at 7. And is the city clerk's office prepared to check the signatures? Oh, sure. Make sure they're valid. Oh, yeah. Valid from District 2. And they have to be District 2 signatures. Right. Just, I'm saying this for yes. the general. Yes. <laughs> I would second what John Odom said. I mean, I would first. First. Yes. <laughs> I, was say. I actually will make the motion. I'll second it. <laughs> right. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. I opposed. Okay, and you have a plan. You have a plan. Okay, so um, uh, council orientation and information. Okay, so um, just really wanted to make sure everyone was available, aware of the resources, and you, I put together a little memo. So just to help you through tonight, you should have your brand spanking new handbook on your desk. So I'd urge the new members and um, prior members to read through that. We try to, to have as much as possible in it. If there are things in it that you would like to see for the future or that we can even add to it, please let us know. For example, there's now a map of city-owned property based on a conversation I had with a council member earlier this week. Um, and if you think there's too much, for example, I notice there's at least three different memos about um, I think it's the public meeting law, and you know, if you think that's overkill, let me know. We can distill it down to one, or just put the law in, or something. We want it to be your resource guide for a year. You can use that whenever you need. Um, other 
documents, I clearly would advise you, um, we have the city charter. It is available online. Anyone who wants a bound hard copy like this, just let us know. We will make sure you have it as soon as you want it. So there's that. Uh, same with the annual report, also available online. But if you don't have the written copy, there's a lot of information there. Soon, um, the FY19 budget book will be coming out. That's we're just obviously budget just got approved, so we're putting that all together. That has a lot of information. You will get those left on your desk. Some of that overlaps with the annual report, but there's still a lot of detailed information. So I advise you to keep those. Obviously, you've got your audit. In in with this memo was uh, an update of stuff that the council does. I mean, excuse me, the departments. Um, so that I think is just uh, we update those from time to time uh, as, as those are needed. So those are documents. I'd suggest and uh, that we um, let's see, I lost my thing. is that in the next few meetings, once we do our goals and all this kind of stuff, for our, our meetings will start filling up. We're going to have a lot of content. But the early meetings, we're doing some finish up from the prior group, but there's, you know, right now we don't have a lot of new initiatives. I'd suggest that at each meeting, we put one department on and maybe toward at the end of the meeting, just call it a workshop where they can go through their, their staff, their budget, their range of services, pending issues that they have, I kind of outlined some of it, and that you all can have a general question and answer period with them. Um, just, you know, why do you do this? How do you do this? I've been asked. I never understood. And um, we'll start with the largest one so that when we get more full agendas, we'll have smaller departments on by then. So that's okay with everyone. I didn't want to presume that, but we'll start scheduling those. I think that would be useful, um, you know, even as someone who yeah. uh, knows the departments generally. I mean, I, I'm, I'm never short on questions or things to talk about. So, um, assuming that that's a, all right, and and I mean, as long as we don't have agendas that are otherwise right. crammed, uh, right. sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. We have tried that in the past, and usually they're at the end, and then someone says, "Well, it's too late. Let's skip over this." So, so it'd be nice to do it while we while we can. And finally. Oh, yeah, Don. To add to that, uh, John Snell shared that the tree board is going to have May as a tree month. Just as we have poetry month, they're going to have things in the store shops downtown all about trees. So they would love to come and talk to us sometime before that. And they hope to do that in May. Well, and that also raises the, the question of um, it may make some sense to have some of our committees that we don't um, hear from often, uh, sort of in that rotation as well. I mean, I, I think of the Conservation Commission. Um, just, I'd love to, you know, hear about what is on their radar uh, for the year and uh, what they're working on. We'll do a committee and a department. Okay. Cool. Good. All right. And then lastly is site visits and tours. These are, I think, people that do them find them very helpful, but they are hard to coordinate. They take some time. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, people always want to do them, and, and, and it's very difficult. So I don't know if you all want to try to coordinate one as a group or a couple, it would have to be a series of them. We, yeah. can, we can get a Actually, van or something. We can use the senior center van, perhaps. Or I think one that would be really valuable, and I did this already, but I would be more than willing to do it again, uh, is the uh, water recovery facility, since <coughs> there's going, yes, the wastewater recovery facility. There's going to be a big proposal coming to us, and I think it really, it changed my perspective on sort of what we as a council need to do and, and sort of why we need to do things. and. I think it would be really important given the nature of the ask and how large that project is in terms of dollars and cents, but also infrastructure upgrade and development. Um, I, I think that's one we should probably really try to, to, to get everyone at. Um, that would be good. And then, yeah. I wonder if, um, I mean, I think it'd be great if we could do multiple tours, and I, I think it's probably not reasonable to expect that we can all make all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know I would like to go, even just as a, a new mayor uh, just to you know go uh, check everything out again um, and I mean one possibility is that we put out some doodle polls to see who could be available for um, for, for different tours well and even if we could get critical mass and then if there's one person that has to miss one particular tour we can always get them through that individual mm -hmm. site on their own but we did this a number of years ago I know when Mary Hooper was mayor and we got a GMT van and we met Two or three awesome. during the summer, you know, when it was slower, and everyone went together. We warned it, and 
Yeah. And we had citizens truck. came, a couple citizens. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's right? right? Plow truck. Plow truck. <laughs> plow truck. Yeah. I don't, you know, Tom left. I don't know. I don't know if you can do a plow truck ride along. I do know you can do a police <laughs> yeah. department, a police ride say. along, and you can do a night at the fire station. Oh, what? Uh, yes, Donna. You know, the place we don't go is the rec building, and we are it's part yeah, of it. Oh, I think yeah. they put it on here. I think here. it definitely yeah, needs need yeah. to go to the rec department. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, All right. Well, the other thing, too, that I that's on my radar, I'm curious how people feel about this, but also, I mean, uh, I guess they'd have to be open to the public, but it might make some sense if people are interested, uh, you know, they've never seen the water resource recovery facility, like that might be a great opportunity for people who want to check it out to go see it. Um, and if we could put anything out there about that. If we cool. warn it as a public meeting, then. Yeah. Uh, Rosie. Well, last year, I think the water folks did a, a whole water day, right? And opened the mm -hmm. facility to the public. Both facilities, Both facilities. water and oh, wastewater, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not sure how many folks took them up on it, but yeah, that was, Sure. Sure. Cool. So, can we put that we on will, we will, your list we to will, do? Yep. And uh, we will put something together and at least propose it. <laughs> okay. Great. So that was really all I had on that item was how I'm sure that you want to do those agenda items. Any other comments or questions about? And I just say again, most of you already know this, but any time you need to reach. Sue or me or Jamie, the questions, call, email. I want you to be sure to get your answers and information. So. Um, I guess I would just add, I, I thought it was great to have all of the, um, you know, upcoming challenges and needs, like, just broken out. That was um, very helpful. Uh, Donna. Is this where we would discuss having a board retreat to work on I our I think goals? we'll do that next. Think next. <laughs> 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 Tell Donna wants a retreat. She's pretty excited about that. <laughs> During gold, I thought we were in gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh, transitioning to gold. Uh, is there anything more that we need? We don't need to. There's no real action. This, no. So, um, so now I guess we can uh, open up the part about goals <laughs> 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 and possibly doing a retreat. So um, we thought the retreat last year was a really bad idea. So I think we're just going to scrap. Charming Bill. Charming. <laughs> <laughs> we'll punch it. I, I thought it was super helpful, and I think we should really do another one. And I, I don't know I don't know that I loved the two separate time format, especially since it was like during work days, which is really hard mm -hmm. with a really crazy work schedule now. Um, so I would like to push that it be in one day, and then if we have any follow ups, that they be in the evenings. I can definitely like one day is easy, but taking like a half day here and a half day there, it's it's really complicated. So I um. Is in the proposal, I talked about bringing in a consultant to do um, uh, priorities, goals, strategic planning. Um, I think what we would be looking at is probably the first night would be kind of would be a retreat. It would be the, the um, what they call governance. So I don't know that we need as much time as we did in a retreat last year. I think we've got, you know, I, mean, I think we'd reaffirm the, the group norms. We'd reaffirm those kinds of things. I mean, I'm, this is my opinion. I don't know. We did a lot of the work to make sure that the new people are on board with all that and talk through roles and those kind of things. And then the second, it'd probably be two nights in a row, is what, what I think it would be. And then the second, the day would be spent mostly with staff. And then the night, and so we'd probably do the first part of the first night on governance, the second part with the council laying out big picture goals and work those through with the staff and have us all together the second night and really come up with the plan. And that's how that would go. And then if, you know, but if we wanted to do a separate retreat, on how we function with each other, we could do that too. Um, but I think we could, I'm certain, having talked to people at that, that would be included, we could include that all in one. So uh, perhaps I, I just missed it now, but uh, uh, would that, the two nights in a row, would that include the strategic planning of mm -hmm. the goals? That is, yes. Okay, that's, that's what would take up the most, like the bulk of the time. So I'm, you know, I'm <coughs> saying, say it was four night, four hours the first night, it might be, first hour to one governance and how we behave and then the second <laughs> uh, I, I don't mean that in a pejorative way just how we conduct ourselves yeah. and how we what our roles are and those kind of things and just if there's any questions about that and then and, and we have a basis to work from like, from last year and I, those are all included in material that we sent out it's in, it's in the, they're all in the um, 
handbook that we got. So the, the work from last year's retreat is in there. And then the second part of the first night would be the council starting to work on goals, priorities, strategic planning. Then we do work with staff during the day, get their take on those things, and then put us all together for a second. Probably be a long, it might be a one time of maybe starting a little late sure. afternoon. Yeah, Rosie, do you think that staff would be in one day able to respond to, like, have all the information that they needed to respond to us about what things are doable and that kind of stuff? That would be my only concern. I think they that. could probably do the best they can, and I think that's what the consultant would push us on to. Because, it, and also, you want to hear from the staff about what their top goals sure. and priorities are. And they'll, I think there's, I, well, again, it depends who we have to do it, but there's some advance work done to this, too. So, uh, you know, talking to everybody, probably they talk to everyone individually, talk to our staff individually, so they would we'd already be thinking about some of those kinds of things. I mean, I guess that's my only other concern with that, too. I mean, I don't know. Is there a reason to do two days in a row? Usually because someone's oh, for their here. Time. For the consultant's time, well, and, and, yeah, our, and our memory. Um, <laughs> the other thing that happened last time with the retreat, and I would like to, to see us spend time on, is council's evaluation. I felt what well, we, we started it, but it, it's very lacking as far as I'm concerned. And so, it, would this be the time we could spend time on actually ha having some? You mean the evaluation of itself, or the manager? evaluation of the of the council itself, and then if we're going to look at yours and have any modifications, is this? We might want to do that separately. That just we might take that. that it came in. It ended up happening last year, part of the subject matter. But okay, I could picture doing. I mean, especially as we are reviewing our norms, um, that I mean, it does seem like it would lend itself as a time to reflect on how we've done. Um, so I, mean, I at least start that the, part of it. Start the conversation right. and be open to having that there if it works. Yep. And uh, I, I think it would be good to give new members that kind of an opportunity to like see and observe and participate and, and kind of get a feel for what it is that we have done and sort of where we're headed. I, I think that would be fair to give everybody a chance to. And realistically, out. when we come to schedule this, it's going to be at least a couple months out. I would imagine just by the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So people will have had a, a little bit of chance to. I don't. I really didn't want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. One of the things that came up in my re-election campaign was that for me it's real important to have a goal, and whether that's the community service goal, that you have it and then you start steps towards it. I feel we sort of drop team bridges in that concept, and I would like to get it back in place before we start setting goals so that we have a wider vision we're going to and then a chunk for this year is related to the whole. And that, I think that kind of approach would get us away from just continuing our goals that we've had in the past. So, I, not to comment on Team Bridges, but my goal, my plan, my thinking for this, my reason for proposing this is I would like, not, not that there's anything bad with the prior goals, but we really have kind of a whole new group here and would really be to start and build goals from scratch mm -hmm. and, you know, some of them might end up being the same and some of the activities may end up being the same, but it be truly what is developed from this group of seven as community. So if Team Bridges or that approach is one of the things that's a top priority and we want to work on that, then we would come up with the action steps. And if it's not, then we know. And it's, it's based on a deliberative conversation with someone else pushing the conversation. So I'm not trying to manage my bosses, but also I'm going to want to participate or the mayor trying to manage mm -hmm. the group. You know, we have someone and someone who works with municipal government that sound reasonable or, or, or was there more I, I to your I, comment? I really w so my point was I don't I hope we don't just take last year's goals and no and no I'm not at all but it just seemed one of the ingredients I would hope to incorporate is to go back to the vision that was put out mm -hmm. through that contest and I, I don't know where to insert it if we don't talk about it either we have some time spent on it before the retreat so that our new council members can be more aware of what those were and make some decisions outside of the retreat, or do we do it all at the retreat? I, just well, could, I mean, I'm thinking out loud here. You could, you could have an informational discussion so prior to the retreat for people who want to get updated on it, and then, but we don't have any Sure. Well, and I mean, my thinking on that, too, had been that really the, the place for that conversation is in the context of the, the city plan. 
um, because that is the document that guides the work of the staff um, and, and the gener general direction of the city. Um, so that's how I had anticipated talking about specifically the Team Bridges um, proposal. Uh, but if, if there are other, if, I mean, if you're interested in doing more, yeah, go ahead. No, just that in one of the planning commissioners that I talked to recently, felt that they have been left a little bit in limbo as to what is the vision of the council mm -hmm. as they approach redoing the master plan, mm -hmm. or whatever we're supposed to call it City now. plan. City plan. Uh, city plan. Uh, and I realized they're right, and she referred to Team Bridges, and I said, oh yes, there was a lot of inspiration there, and there may be pieces of it we want to follow through on, but we haven't made any decisions about it. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's part of our goal. Staff follows our goals too. If not now, later. <laughs> well, we can certainly talk about that during uh, the the uh, the retreat time. I mean, would, do you think that would be sufficient? It would appease me. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Are the rest of you interested in it? <laughs> I'll say yes, I am, and, and I and I have heard similar uh, uh, ideas to you that that uh, there was this whole process uh, that it seems to have been. Uh, to some degree uh, left alone and that it should be brought back to the city plan, I believe. So I think that you and Anne are on the same page as far as I can tell, okay. um, as far as getting the, the I incorporating what came out of the, the net zero contest uh, into the city plan and discussing it ourselves uh, as necessary. Yes? Yeah. Great. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so do we, uh, so, oh yeah, Rosie. So there was a bit of a spending request in there. Um, and I talked to Bill about this a little bit and I'm fairly comfortable with it. Um, but I thought that we should kind of bring that out and just talk about that for a second. Um, that this, we are making a, a significant investment in this process this year. Um, that's more than we've done in the past. So for a consultant <coughs> and for some software. tracking software. Tracking. Um, which would which will allow for public disclosure of where we're at. Um, so we have a, I did look at, I, meaning Todd, looked at um, opportunities uh, for funding and uh, we're pretty confident we can do this. Uh, we have about 9750 in a software purchase this year or that we had anticipated to spend more that we, we won't. So um, that's available for software. We have $10,000 in project management, and this that's what this is, is a project management software tool that would be available. Uh, and then we, um, we would allocate these uh, resources also to the water and sewer funds. We'd all be, so that would be a, we, about another 10,000 series. So that's about 30,000 of the total. Um, for, and then I, th I think we're probably gonna be in the 33,000, so the rest would come from fund balance, whatever we exceeded that, but it wouldn't be a big significant hit. And then for in the future, the $10,000 per year licensing fee, we actually had a $14,000 licensing fee planned that we probably won't continue with, so that would free that up and we would use this as a licensing fee. So it should be, should be covered. I mean, it is money, you know, otherwise we would save that money, so I'd be clear that it's not uh, free, but there are places that are relevant that it your comments about that. One of the things that I am very interested in uh, in moving forward over the course of this year is having some way to track a, a lot of different data for the city, uh, particularly over time, uh, to see how we're doing. And I think it tells there's a lot of uh, stories that can be told from data. I mean, this is the science teacher in me speaking that loves data uh, and telling stories from data. I, this, if I'm not mistaken, Bill, this is the kind of software that um, would handle potentially a lot of different kinds of data. It would handle informational data also, so basically once we develop a strategic plan, <coughs> the, the plan itself would go into the software with the action steps and then as people were completing those steps, they could, it wouldn't just have to come from me filling out the little form in green and red, but you know, maybe the, the DPW staffer says, yes, this task is completed, it goes in so any of you can look and, and the public gets a kind of a higher end version of it that they can see how things are coming, whether you know, streets are being paved on time or 
whatever indicators that we've uh, you know how we're doing for certain indicators. Um, so you know they call them dashboards and those kinds of things. So we can look at a quick glance and see the various outcomes that are happening. Um, so. Okay. So I think we probably do need a motion because we're um, spending some money on this. Any, any other thoughts on this aspect? All right. So is there a motion? So I would move that we instruct the city manager to move forward with the uh, goals process as uh, he has presented it to us, including um, uh, arranging for a consultant and moving forward with the purchase of the tracking software. Second. Great. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I think, I think we will all benefit from this. Really useful. <coughs> okay, and committee appointments. And Donna, I know you had some comments about the committee appointments. Well, I think it would be good to maybe discuss some of the committees, especially for our new counselors, but I would like to wait until we have our sixth member uh, in place before we do the appointments. It's fine with me. I I'm just want to check in. I mean, are, are there any committees that uh, are that need another person before. There are uh, two, it looks like. Um, it looks like the Community Services Steering Committee, uh, Justin was the only counselor on that. And they're not really active right now. Okay, and then the Housing Task Force. I'm interested in that one, so if others aren't. I mean, I have been, I went to one of the meetings and I plan to continue going to the meeting, so maybe we don't need to do a formal appointment, but I would. I will commit to going to the, the meetings for the next couple months on that. So there is some council representation there. Okay, great. And then it looks like the uh, Montpelier Foundation. Well, those don't necessarily have to be council members, although we put a rep on. Mm -hmm. I know um, Jean was really interested in that. She mm -hmm. ask if she wanted to stay on, but um, that involves some fundraising. But and then if someone's interested, again, we can, but that, I don't think that's a critical need. Water Rate Study Committee. That is dormant. To say, aren't they mostly done? Well, they're either done, either done or need to start again, but we would start from scratch. So. I think, the, in my estimation, the one that we probably most need people is the, um, the TIF core group. It was, it was the mayor, Holler, Gene Olson, and Donna. And so we've already co opted Anne. Um, and unfortunately, all those meetings are daytime meetings, so it's tough, I know. We now have a council that <laughs> isn't as available as day as some have been in the past. So, um, but if someone's interested at least being looped in in more detail, uh, it'll be good to have another another person because we are gearing up. And, and the new council members might want to attend some meetings this month yeah. well, and, and look and, and consider what they want to request. Um, one we may need somebody on is the Building Code Appeals Committee. I haven't been notified of any, but I'm just noting that we're coming up on that permitting season, so mm -hmm. this is a likely time to get some. Um, and I Although the, we the may bulk okay. of those were sprinkler variants. Right. <laughs> 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 the vast majority. But, but well, yes. Should we talk about maybe the TIF uh, group and the, the Building Code sure. Appeals? And, and you can always make interim appointments, ones. too, on those. Is, <coughs> um, is anybody else interested in um, being on the, the TIF committee? Tax increment financing, yep. just for those. <laughs> We're talking a lot of shorthand don't here. All, Please don't interrupt if. <laughs> I'd like to continue. Do, how many do we need? Um, well, we don't, I mean, it's, it's up to us. I just think we're, we're really in crunch time now, and in fact, we're going to talk about that under my manager's report. We're you know, closing in on probably wanting to send a letter of intent, which doesn't commit us to anything, but it gets us in the, the queue for the state, and then coming back with a proposal to the full council, and so I think, you know, it's the time for buy-in and people to be involved and, and everything, but it, it's also, I, I do acknowledge, it's, their, their meetings are, we're, you know, we're dealing with the consultants. So can we d uh, just deal with Donna and I for now, or do we need, we need any more? Does that work? That would work. Okay. If yeah. anyone's interested or wants to talk to any of us in any detail, just let us know what we have to do with one on one or one on two. One on three, but no more than one. <laughs> uh, 
All right, anybody for the, the Building Code Appeals Committee? It's lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to serve on that. Yeah. Great, thank you, Glenn. All right, and I'm, I'm going to assume that we don't need a motion on doing? Yeah, well, we can make a motion. For the building code, you definitely would because it's part of our ordinance. <coughs> okay, then. I will move to appoint Glenn to the building code appeals committee. Second. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? At some point, we, sh I mean, we should talk about whether we want, you know, we have, I don't know, trying to remember the last time we reopened the citizen seat. It's just been. For the building code? One non council I don't okay. think I remember reading anything about the limit. So. Okay, great. Well, um, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, yes, sorry. The other one that I wanted to bring up that's not on this list is we had formulated a council committee on committees, which was yes. tasked with rather tongue-in-cheek name, but it was tasked with um, figuring out what our criteria was going to be for appointing people to committees because yes. we were running into situations where we were having lots of competition for the seats and we weren't sure whether to just reappoint people over and over or what our criteria should be there. So um, I believe that, the, that Mayor Holler was one of the folks on that committee, so you probably need a, a third another person. A second person. Well, you were in, uh, I, I thought there were three of us. I thought it was you and myself, you, John, and I, I thought. <laughs> I, thought was I was, actually. Oh, I was, but John never called a meeting, so we never met. We never, yeah, we did never, we did not meet. But, but it, I would like to, actually. It is desperately needed. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just talking about this today, actually, <laughs> at, at work with some folks. But I, I think we do need to schedule a meeting, but I'd like to wait and see if, I, I think we had one appointment tonight, but it was one person applying for one spot. I'm, I want to make sure everybody has the chance to figure out what we're doing. Two coming up. In the, in the next couple of meetings. Yeah, what's the next? So I'll label 11, but we'll have a full, full board then. Okay. Um, well, so do you three want to continue? Or what? what I was wasn't. You on were it. not on it. It was Donna and I. Ashley and I were with John. I will, I'll just say I'm, I probably don't want to be on that committee. Um, but if there's. I'm happy to be on it. Okay. Um, do you, well, um, hmm, should we do this as a motion or then we can just, I think we can just set the committee. Since there's no, right. you know, sort of call the council committee, committee, committee anyway, it's not a, okay, yeah. great. Who's going to call it? That was the problem last yeah. time. We're going to have the committee, someone should. Actually, go for it. Oh, it's such a Leslie Nope thing. <laughs> 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 so I move that we appoint uh, Ashley as the chair of the committee on committees. Sure. that we appoint Connor as the third member. Second. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <coughs> and we'll Go. Uh, take up the other appointments at another time. Does that sound reasonable? Just April 11th, right? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Great, so that is it. <laughs> so, we're going to do council reports. Um, so did you guys hear about what council reports are, basically? Okay. All right. Well, so I guess let's start over there, Rosie. <laughs> oh, but I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to thank the city staff for putting together last night's event. I think it was a really great send off for John and Jean and Justin. Um, and it was nice to sort of see everybody socially, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, and welcome. Madam Mayor Ann Watson uh, and our two newest members Connor and Glenn. It's going to be a pleasure to serve with you guys. Tony? This is your opportunity to bring up anything, particularly if you have something you want your constituents to know. Um, and so the one thing I'd like to, to see us do is develop a better system to tell voters where the information is. One of the complaints I got standing on the stoop prior to election was that people were hunting for information and even when they walked into the election, the voting boom, they didn't see the charts to the right of them. They just didn't see it. And some people didn't understand how much was on the website. So I think we need to do some public education about where things are and w under what title. That was the other thing. People were really surprised how many articles we had. 
So I think if we, we have the information disseminated, but we don't let people know that we have it disseminated, that sounds a little, anyway. So I'd like to sort of work on that and keep that in our awareness and just thank the voters for reelecting me and being back here. No, oh, sure. I just um, want to echo what Ashley said there. There was a lovely reception last night, so thanks to everybody for putting it together. Um, and, and really, you know, it's a bit daunting being a new council member, um, but everybody's been nothing but welcoming so far. I mean, short of doing trust falls, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, everybody's That's been... That's the retreat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, There's still time. But, but from the, the previous counselor, counselors to everybody on there now, um, you know, I can tell it's going to be a great experience uh, working with all of you there. Uh, so really looking forward to it. And uh, I would also thank the voters of District 2. There was a hard-fought campaign and, uh, and my opponents there who ran very clean races. So uh, I appreciate that. The one announcement, and we already covered it a bit, would be uh, March 24th, uh, March for Our Lives, noon to 2 on the State House lawn. So just to put your down with us. Thanks very much. Uh, I have very little to report, but I'm pleased to be here. And uh, again, as Connor said, grateful to everyone for the warm welcome. Uh, uh, thanks to the to the voters, everyone who voted, uh, and to everyone who ran. It was uh, a real learning experience uh, for me, and and it continues to be. So I look forward to working with you all. I'll try to do my best. Thank you. And I remembered I had one thing to report. Oh, yes. Sorry. Go ahead, Rosa. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to thank um, city staff, particularly Jamie and Zach, for putting the new parking map on the city website. Um, <laughs> it's, there's an interactive version that allows you to kind of move around, and there's also a printable version, um, as well as the parking prices posted. So hopefully that will help alleviate some confusion. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> All right, so I have a, a few things. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody who turned out to vote uh, in the last election. Thanks for participating, and thanks for, for your votes. I mean, I know I had no opponent, but I'm still very grateful. Um, and I just want to also say to all of you that I'm really excited to work with you and to, to help lead this group. Um, just a, a couple of other things that are coming up. <clears throat> I just want to make sure people are aware. So one of the upcoming meetings we're going to be appointing someone to the newly formed uh, Central Vermont Internet or CVI uh, group. And I, I'm particularly excited about that uh, entity and, uh, you know, the service that they may bring to Central Vermont. So, um, you know, hoping that we get some good candidates for, uh, you know, who can be our representative to their board. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, <clears throat> sort of on the, on the issue of information and getting information out to the public, one of the um, committees that I that doesn't exist um, necessarily yet uh, is um, I, I'm interested in getting a, a group together of people who would be interested in working on information um, digitally with the city. Um, I, I've been sort of working on this sort of behind the scenes uh, with city staff to um, to uh, get our our systems to be more searchable, and we're ma I think we're making progress um, in that conversation which is great um, but uh, there are lots of other things uh, to take on in terms of information with the city so um, if you're interested in helping me out with that that's great uh, so just putting putting that on your radar um, and then a another thing <coughs> is that you know just as gosh you know as a, as a teacher when you step into a new role I mean the first thing you do right is you like look at your, the walls of your classroom and like what are you going to use them for and so I've been thinking about the, the walls of this chamber and, you know, what, yeah. what do we want the purpose of um, the, the walls to be? And, I mean, while these paintings are great, um, I would love to see um, uh, just a little bit of intention as to what is going on the walls. And specifically, um, the things that I, that I want to see in here are images that uh, remind, remind us of who isn't here and who, who can't be here. Um, another uh, possible goal is just where do we want to go as a city, like where are we headed, uh, what's our vision, so things that remind us of that vision. And then third, just, you know, um, representation matters, right? And so, uh, you know, images of where, you know, people who come to, to sit at this table up here and don't see themselves represented on this horseshoe, they might see 
themselves represented on the walls somehow. Um, so I have a, a request out to uh, the T.W. Wood Gallery who supplies us with these uh, images uh, if they uh, had anything that would fit those criteria. And so they, uh, the uh, fellow over there has gotten a, a proposal to me which I'll end up sharing um, with all of you, but there, you know, there may, I, I mean, uh, I'm certainly open to, to suggestions or if you have, um, you know, thoughts or ideas as to, to what that should look like. So maybe there might be a couple of you who would be interested in helping pick out some art um, to go in uh, on these walls, that would be great. Uh, and then we're also, just today, we're talking about uh, all the all the mayors that are out <laughs> front, um, uh, and, that yes. are, and that maybe we want to use that space differently as well. So again, if if there were a couple people who wanted to uh, have some input into that, um, we can. It does. I don't want it to just be me saying like, <laughs> ah, it's all gotta go. <laughs> so, um, uh, but if we if there's you know more input, that would be useful. So that's it from for me. Uh, just a few quick things. Uh, I warned you all I might have a dramatic announcement today, but I don't yet, so it's going to be boring. Um, I wanted to thank the Board of Civil Authority and all the election volunteers for uh, a, uh, working the election, which was a surprisingly high turnout based on the early vote, so we were caught a little off guard, but it all went well. Um, I, I want to thank the voters of the city for a third term. I know it wasn't exactly a contest, but thank you anyway. Um, having said that, water and sewer bills are due tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just quickly, so um, Donna, you were talking about information, you know, the, the, the information on the right not being available. Um, just so you know, the same information was actually physically put into each voting area. Um, and that is actually required by law with the charter change now. We have to make all that information available to everybody. So just in that particular instance, they, I feel like they were boom, inundated with I it. I know. I mentioned to people, and they would say, oh, was that what that was? They just put their ballots on top and marked them. They didn't pick up the paper. So they need to know that it's in there. I know it sounds a little elementary, but I think people are so overwhelmed that we may need to leave them a little breadcrumb. Yeah, I just, it, it's, I mean, I would just argue yeah. from the election administrator standpoint that there is only so much you can do. I mean, a part of participating in democracy does require you to sort of step out and you, you can't have everything delivered to your door. I think with the, the charter changes, it's an extraordinary amount of communication we do with them. Um, I think with the bond votes, uh, it's, it's more than usual. I don't know if that's more, but those are also prescribed by law. So I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to other things, but I can tell you from personal experience, you're, no matter what you do, there are going to be people who always feel that way. Um, so, you know, we can take those steps, but you got to, the voters have to take that step too. Uh, on that point, uh, I did note there was a letter to the editor um, asking for us to go back to sending out the books to every home saying that they missed, missed that. I, don't I just have a few things. Um, as members of Vermont League of Cities and Towns, we have access to certain training. So I just want to, if you guys didn't already receive this, there is a new uh, select or our Spring Select Board Institute, which is for elected officials such as yourselves on governing bodies. It's covering things like roles and responsibilities, open meeting law, conflicts of interest, Clean Water Act requirements maintaining local highways, human resources, legislative updates. So we, uh, it, it is on Saturday, March 24, <laughs> um, at Lake Maury. So if anyone is interested in this or any of these types of VLCT training, the city does support these, and we support your attendance. So those are available to you. Um, hopefully we'll train you so well you won't need this, but you're certainly welcome to them. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are working toward a TIF letter of intent. I know there's a, that's a very complicated topic and a lot of issues that, that the council is going to have to work through and decide. Uh, and so be clear that um, we may need to file this to meet a filing deadline, but it does not commit us to an actual application. We can withdraw it the next day. Also didn't want to create any surprises when someone says, oh, you filed your letter and we didn't know about it. So. A um, couple of uh, administrative things. With um, the former mayor, I met 
weekly, and I used to, we had kind of a running list of topics we discussed, and at the request of the previous council, I would email out that list most every week um, so people could see what the mayor and I talked about. We had our first meeting today with a list, so I didn't know if that was something people still wanted to get. It's the same list, <laughs> just uh, uh, updated. But um, so I, I'm semi-reliable at that, and at least you can see the topics that we're discussing, and um, you know, then you can ask either one of us if you want more information about it. Because so, sometimes we are gearing up on topics that are pre-council, so it's good for you to know what's going on. And a um, very simple question, but um, as, a, as a new group, you do get to make one big executive decision. Do you want to continue keeping your meetings at 6.30, or do you have a different start time? have strong feelings about this and other people have more constraints we've started as late as 7 30 and as early as 5 30. Uh, so. 5 30 is way too no, I'm hard just, I'm just <laughs> that was during the zoning that yeah was terrible. Uh, other times too. Uh, Rosie, do we want to think about seven unless we have significantly larger agendas seven would be fine with Seven's me fine. i also you know hope to Keep things moving, you know? Well, that yeah. might inspire us to do that. <laughs> right. right. I would accept seven. <laughs> <laughs> Just try it and see what yeah. Well, we could try it. The problem with seven is the back end, but. Um, right. Well, and if. Uh, is it a hardship for city staff to come back at seven? or? Well, I, I can't. You know, look, it's, it's eight. I mean, we're here. It doesn't, yeah. you know, okay. I mean, I stay through, so I, it's a lot of people do, so. Well, and we can just. Uh, also see if we are even with a, a lighter agenda you know not getting through it <laughs> by 10 I mean I would like to be ending our meetings by 10 um, if not earlier so <laughs> right 10 10 to me is the the latest I want to go and start turning into a pumpkin after that so well, we can try to control you know what goes on the agenda and obviously last year we had a very time consuming thing we all we also all talk at these meetings, so we, we ourselves control how long we meet. One I'm, a question on that: What time does the city staff day typically end? Apart from you, the the, the, the office hours are eight to four thirty. Yeah. Um, department heads, you know, the management staff depends what's happening. Okay, so earlier or later start times for our meetings don't necessarily make a huge difference for staff. Yeah, I don't know. A couple of them here. You guys, Todd, what he thinks. Do you guys care? I, I, I have our regular list. I mean, uh, we're, I don't, uh, it's not enough time to really do anything, so I don't think that we can work through it. And it just seems that it's quite a time. Right. Uh, you know, get some meat or whatever. Um, and, you know, actually for people like, you know, for, for me who lives in town, I actually, we might actually open up a window to run home instead of staying here. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I used to do when I was later, but I, most of the time, I'm just getting ready for the meeting. So, you know, everyone's. It sounds like there's some consensus about seven. It's worth a try. Yeah. And yeah, if it doesn't work yeah, out, then 6:30 is fine. All right, yeah. so let's try for that. Is that all right? Fine. Okay. That's I asked. Great. I, I think that's it. So. As long as we're done by 10 minutes. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I anticipate this is going to be one of our shorter meetings of the year. So, without objection. Yeah. We'll adjourn. Ten of eight. Yes. Thanks, everyone.